Hi, this is Frank Carmody. So we're going to go ahead and uh, take a look at doing uh, using the extrude tool. So this is usually the first uh, time we're going to be doing uh, three-dimensional, actual three-dimensional modeling in Inventor. So let's uh, three-dimensional model always consumes a 2D, 2D sketch. So you must have a 2D sketch in order to make a three-dimensional model. Now there are um, some things in Inventor that will automatically make you um, certain types of objects. Um, if you just want to start off with something, uh, it's best to just learn it from scratch though and uh, you understand what it's doing. So let's go ahead and um, create a 2D sketch. So we click create 2D sketch. We choose our plane that we want the sketch on. Okay, so now we have uh, we have our 2D sketch and we're just going to create a simple rectangle. And we are going to dimension that rectangle. Let's say that we're going to make it a uh, 4 by 2, 4 inches by 2 inches. And if it disappears like this on you, you just click zoom all and it will come right back into view. Um, then you can wheel mouse a little bit out just so you can get your dimensions in. Dimension the other side. That's going to be two inches. Okay, so we have our rectangle. Now, we have to get out of the sketch mode and back into 3D mode in order to extrude. So we're going to right click, click OK to exit the tool, right click, finish 2D sketch. I think we could have just clicked finish 2D sketch, but uh, we'll do that next time. Okay, so we have our sketch here. Notice on the, notice on the um, right hand side that we see our sketch in the um, uh, Explorer bar. Um, now notice the sketch is not consumed yet. Okay, so let's go ahead and we're going to extrude. So we click on extrude. Now since there's only one active sketch, um, Inventor automatically selects that sketch. Now this is new in 2013. What we have here is a heads-up display. It gives us all of the options or most of the options that are on the actual uh, dialog box, but we can still see the original kind of old school dialog box up here. So we have a subset of those, um, the most used, uh, and they're the most used ones. The most used commands are down here in our heads up display. So in general, we'll be using that. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and extrude. So we, now we have our XY uh, plane back here. That's where our sketch is on. Now we're gonna extrude out into the Z plane. Okay, you don't really need to know that, but it's just good to comment on. Um, and we're gonna say we're gonna extrude six inches, okay? and then we're going to click the green check. Now there are lots of different um, options here, okay? So you could you could say that we just want surface, you could say we want solid output, usually just want solid. The direction is good to know though, okay? So we have direction one that comes out in space in the z-axis, direction two goes away from us in the space in the z-axis, and then symmetric actually puts the sketch in the middle of the extrusion and extrudes out in both directions. In general, you can leave direction one or direction two, depending on what you want. Um, okay, so when we're finished, we click the green check, and our extrusion is created. Let's go ahead and zoom all. Okay, so we have our, our initial extrusion done, um, and now we're going to go ahead and we're actually going to extrude a second object on top of this. Okay, so, so what we need to do in order to create a second extrusion is that we need to create a new sketch. Notice that our sketch one has been consumed by extrusion one. So we can actually open this up and say that I wanted to go back in and edit, if I wanted to go back and edit this sketch, like for example, let's say, let's say that um, when I made the sketch, let's say I realized I made a mistake and I wanted it to be three inches instead of two. Okay, so how I do that is I would double click the sketch, the sketch would open back up, I double click the dimension, change it to three inches, and depending on how much I've changed the sketch, Inventor will automatically update my extrusion. So if I right click, finish 2D sketch, notice that Inventor automatically updates that to be three inches instead of two. Okay, so now I can't use this sketch one again. Okay, so a common mistake that's made by students is that inside sketch one, they draw everything in a single sketch. Okay. And they don't realize that you can only use make one 3D feature out of one 2D sketch. So the sketch is consumed by that single 3D feature. So if you need more 3D features, you have to make more sketches. So let's go ahead and do finish 2D sketch again to get back out. Okay, so to add another 3D feature to this part, what we have to do is add another sketch. Okay, so let's go ahead and create 2D sketch again. Now Inventor makes it pretty easy to do this. So if I click on create 2D sketch, 
Notice that this time I don't get that same plane I got the first time. I don't get the yellow set of planes. What I get is the ability to select a face of my existing 3D feature. Okay, So this uh, extrusion that I have here, I can select any face. Let's go ahead and select uh, the top. Okay, um, And I'm going to go ahead and click on the face of the uh, extrusion. Okay, now notice that my sketch lives on the face of that extrusion. So you can see how as I rotate the cube around that I get that I get that extrusion or that I get my, my grid lines kind of I can go below the grid, I can go above the grid in 3D space. Okay, so now I have my sketch two and I'm inside of sketch two and I know that because I can see my grid lines right here. Okay, so we're gonna make a second feature on this 3D on a 3D feature on the in this part. Okay, so let's go ahead and we're going to um, put our circle right here. We're going to expand our circle. Now let's go ahead and dimension this circle. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to make the circle uh, one inch diameter. One inch diameter. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to actually dimension it from the sides as well. Okay, so we're going to go ahead. It's a one inch diameter. We're going to dimension. We click the circle. We click over on the edge of our uh, uh, sketch it actually brought the lines from the other from the 3d extru the other extrusion the extrusion one it brought the edge lines into our sketch so we can dimension to them okay and then we have to kind of think oh it's um it's a one inch diameter so it's going to be half an inch radius okay so basically and it's uh four inches um, tall so basically four inches in half, is it four or six inches? It's six inches. Six inches in half is three inches. We subtract another 0.5 inches, so we're going to get 2.5 inches to be right in the middle. Oh, man, I, it didn't work out like that, did it? Oh, that was my mistake. We're actually dimensioning to the middle of the circle, so we can just divide the air, the length in half. That's six inches divided in half is three inches, so that put, puts it right in the middle. Then we can go ahead, we can dimension to the top. Oh, or actually to the side, bring that out, and this was uh, three inches wide. So from the middle of the circle to the edge of the uh, shape is 1.5 inches. Oop, and I was wrong again. Uh, this was our four inch side, so it's going to be two inches to put it right in the middle there. Um, okay, so that that is fully dimensioned there. So we have a the circle has been dimensioned. Um, the circle has been dimensioned to one inch. We place, we've dimensioned the circle so it's it lives exactly in the center of our of our object. Okay, so we're all done with the sketch. We right click and we can go finish 2D sketch. Okay, so now we're back out in 3D mode. We have a sketch that we can work with, and now we're going to go ahead and extrude again. Okay, so now now we have multiple areas that we can extrude. Okay, so let's take a look at the two couple of things that we can extrude. We could extrude out the area that's not in the circle. So the area that's part of the sketch but not in the circle, okay, we could extrude, which would result, as you see here, in a hole the size of the circle that we drew. Okay, so that's one thing we could do with it. Okay. Now, if we go ahead and we click the red X, that means we don't want to do it. We could also extrude, click the extrude uh, uh, tool again. We could also extrude the 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 uh, the circle out from the shape. Okay, so we could uh, we could extrude the circle out from the shape. We could also, instead of extruding the circle out, that would be a join. Okay, we could also do a cut. Okay, and that automatically notice that it automatically changed the direction of the cut. Okay, uh, because it knows we want to cut through the object. Okay, we could also cut a hole down through the object from that circle. Okay, um, we could also do an intersection. That means that we would cut away everything in the object that is going through except what intersected with the circle. Okay, so there's lots of things that you can do with extrude uh, that you might not be uh, completely familiar with or it might not immediately come to mind when you start doing this. Okay, so let's go ahead and we're going to do a join. We're going to do it in direction one that's out from the, the, um, the original object. And we're only going to do it one inch. Okay, we're going to click the check and that's going to leave us with this shape. Okay, let's go ahead and do another extrusion here. Uh, this time, 
This time we're actually going to make a, a hole through the object using extrude. So we're going to right click. You can actually right click on the face. This is the other way to do it. You can right click and we can do, do uh, Oh, you can do it there. That's interesting. Uh, okay, so we're, we could actually click on the, the plane first and then click create sketch. That gives us a sketch immediately because the plane's already selected. Uh, this time let's do a, a rectangle. Actually, let's do a complicated shape. Okay, so we're going to make a rectangle. Uh, we're going to dimension that rectangle. Actually, we're not going to dimension it yet. We're going to make a circle. Okay, we're going to um, go ahead and trim off some of the lines on the circle. Okay, to make kind of a complicated shape here. Uh, and your shape could be anything when you do this. Uh, I'm just this is just an example, so your shape could be different. Oops. Control Z if you accidentally trim off too much. Okay, so let's say that we make this kind of complicated shape. You'd want to dimension this. Okay, so we'd go ahead. Um, oops. Okay, we actually want to dimension the radius of this. Okay, so let's say this radius is one inch. Okay, let's say that. Oops. Okay, let's say that we're going to go ahead and dimension uh, the other radius to be the same at one inch. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and dimension uh, this to be one inch. Dimension this side to be one inch. Notice that a lot of the work in this is dimensioning, right? Okay, so that would be fully dimensioned at this point. We also want to position this object. So we're going to go ahead and dimension this out to the side. Okay, so we want to make sure that, um, you know, we're not going to be able to center this, but we want to come kind of close to it. Okay, we're going to go ahead and dimension uh, from the top. Oops. And I over dimensioned the object. It creates a driven dimension when you do this. Okay, and it's actually. Okay, so we're going to dimension up to the top this time. Oops. Get back in the dimensioning tool. We're going to dimension it up to the top. We're going to make that one inch as well. Okay, so we've fully dimensioned. You know, we're just making the shape up. So in this case, we're just kind of making up the dimensions. But now this is fully dimensioned. Okay. So uh, let's go ahead and right click finish 2D sketch. And now we have kind of our complicated shape. So let's go ahead and we're going to use the extrude tool to actually make a hole out of this. So we click the extrude tool, we click the, the shape, the sketch that we've made, which is sketch 3. You can see it over here in the explorer bar. Okay, in this case we're going to select cut and we're going to cut it down. Uh, now you can do a, a, a distance, so I can say, say we didn't want it to go all the way through. Say we wanted to only go three inches, that's part of the way through. See on my view, I can see how deep the hole goes, right? Say we don't want it to go all the way through the object, we can go ahead and, and click OK there. Okay, so now we have a hole that doesn't go all the way through the object. Okay, so finally, let's go ahead. Um, so we've made, we've extrude joined, we extrude cut, and now we're going to extrude intersect. Okay, so we need, we need to go ahead and make a sketch. So I usually click to create 2D sketch first, and then I select the plane. Then let's go ahead and make a circle here. And the easiest way to do this, if you're doing this kind of freehand, is you can actually see right here. Do you see these dotted lines? Those dotted lines will show you when you're in the middle of the object. So if I have the dotted lines up here, I know I'm, you know, I'm halfway, vertically halfway here. And now if I go back and forth, now I'm horizontally halfway. So it's kind of easy to make it kind of in the middle of the object, right? Now notice on my, um, notice when I get right to the edge there, it gives me a tangent constraint. Okay, which I'm fine with in this case. Okay, so in this case, just by how I've drawn this, I've actually made this so that I can just add the dimensions in without having to really um, change any dimensions. So just by drawing it correctly, I can just go in and accept each of the dimensions that I've that are in here. And notice it gives me. Oh, so this adding this dimension will over constrain this sketch. The reason that is is that I already had the uh, the tangent constraint over on the side. Uh, so that becomes a driven dimension, which is fine in this case. 
All right, so we're going to go ahead and right-click Finish 2D Sketch. Okay, and we're going to do our final extrusion here. We're going to go ahead and now remember I could I could click the outside of the cir the area outside the circle or the area inside the circle. I'm going to click the area inside the circle. Now we're going to we're going to select intersect this time. So we're going to select intersect. Uh, in this case, instead of doing a distance, we're just going to select. Um, so notice this down arrow right here. You can actually do a distance next to next space, or you can just select through all. Through all is your best bet because it, then you're sure it will go all the way through. Okay, and that brings us, notice that when we didn't do through all, if we just did a distance, we didn't capture this last, um, our, our top portion, the, our second extrusion. So we didn't capture extrusion two uh, if we didn't do extrude all. Uh, so let's do through all, and that adds in extrusion two. We're going to click a check. And notice this is the sh our final shape here. So you can do very complicated shapes using the combination of sketches and extrusions. Okay, uh, that's it for today, and good luck. Remember to save your drawing.